It's trips, it's tickets, it's concerts. What? Actually, I'm going to toss this out to the audience. What would you guys want for free? You there in the hat. Me? You. Yes. Oh, like expensive tech gear. Like what kind of expensive tech gear would you want? A better computer than the one I bought. All right. That is a definite possibility, which I'm going to try and walk, walk through today. Problem is with expensive gear, sometimes they won't let you keep it. But there's extended review periods, which may lapse into you getting to keep, keep it anyway. All right, uh, somebody else, you there, with the curly hair. Yes, you. Well, no, uh, you. I, I, I'm just randomly picking <laughs> but it does happen from time to time. So basically the big thing about getting free stuff, it's all about communication. The social networking stuff that Chris Brogan talked about earlier does definitely help. The more people know who you are, the more likely you're, you're to get a response. Now, us at Twig, uh, Steve, Pierce, and Ashley here, we're built on a reputation because we're part of a local radio station. We're with uh, 90.1 FM well. So that does have a little bit of credibility when you add one to a company like say Microsoft, or Yahoo or Apple, it does kind of help. But uh, actually, how many of you have, have podcasts and blogs? Let's just see a show of hands here. And how long have your podcasts been like running for? Like, what's about the average here? Two weeks now. Two weeks? All right. <laughs> what about you? How long have you been running? My blog started a month ago. And what does your blog specifically deal with? It's uh, public relations as it relates to like, video games. Excellent. Now, that I can definitely help you with. <laughs> now, typically, when you approach a company, you're likely going to get shot down the first time out. But that's not always the case, though. It depends on how you approach it. Now, one of the things we're learning now in college, where I am, I go to Niagara College at the Welland campus, is how to write a proper business letter. How many of you have written business letters? Okay, cool. You're already halfway there, more or less. So basically, what you do to get free stuff is you write the letter, say, hi, my name is... We'll say Dave. Hi, my name is Dave. I'm from, what's the name of your podcast that started two weeks ago? Uh, Alright, so you say you're from that. Hi, I've just started up a recent show, and I would like to be able to review some of your gear. I am a growing show. I'm expected to have this much of an audience. So basically, check your website, check your hits about what you're getting. If you're just starting out, if you advertise it right, there are other workshops on that, so I'm not really going to touch on that. But if you mention what your average web stats are, they're likely going to respond to you. So you say, I would like to be able to review your product as an impartial journalist, or whatever, because that's typically, I find, the best way to go about it. Say you're a journalist, because a lot of us are, and uh, typically they'll hand you stuff up. Now, uh, some of the, actually, I'm not actually going to call Pierce up here for a sec, because typically this is the guy that I do a lot of my reviews with. So Pierce, why don't you tell about some of the stuff that we've gotten at This Week in Geek? Be more specific. What have we got? Like, what uh, types of things have we gotten? We've gotten DVDs, we've gotten uh, video games, we've gotten hardware to review, we've gotten uh, computer products like cell phones, uh, printers, what, what else have we gotten? Um, we've gotten some audio gear before. Yeah, we've gotten some audio gear, we've gotten some... Uh, Oh, I've, I've lost track. <laughs> yeah. Now, typically, when you send in the request, you should get a response within two to three days, depending. Now, an email is probably the first point of contact you want to make. And the problem is most people don't know where to find the emails. Let's say you want to contact, I'm going to address you because I know the video game side thinks the best. If you want to say Activision's website, right? You go into the corporate info, you're looking for a phone number, you're looking for an email address. Usually, you want somebody in public relations. You contact that person, email them. If you don't get a response within two to three days, call. 
say, hi, my name is so-and-so. I wrote about two to three days ago. I just wanted to follow up with you and see what the status is of maybe receiving review products. Now, depending on how you present yourself, likely you're going to get something because they see you took the time to wait for them. You also took the initiative to follow up with it. So typically, expect to get a few little things at first, like video games are a dime a dozen. They're just going to throw them at you. DVDs, same thing. Hardware, it gets a little bit trickier because some of the companies want it back. For example, computer products, depending on what it is, they may only keep it. If it's a sound card, they'll let you keep it. If it's a processor, depending on how expensive it is, they'll let, they'll, they'll let you keep it. But some companies want to return. For example, one of the companies we deal with want some of their stuff back. And that's no big deal. Because we have to keep it for like, what, two months anyway? Yeah, about two months, which is enough time for us to... Review it. Yeah. And all that. Exactly. with it, if you will. Exactly. Like, um, we've had some video games that were out weeks before we were released, which was pretty cool. Yeah. And because you ask the companies that you want to review their stuff, they're going to ask you to come out for certain press events. For example, this year we went to Microsoft's X07. We got to play Halo 3 weeks before it came out. Got to play uh, Lost Odyssey, Mass Effect, Rock Band before and Rock Band before it came out, which was a huge thing. And once you get some of the free stuff from the companies, like I said, they're going to want to talk to you. My best advice to them is become friendly with them. Like, once you get the PR communication open, call them every now every and then. Just call and say hi. What's up? What's going on in the industry? And for bloggers, this is really important. Ask them if they can put in something in touch with certain titles that you want to review. That'll show that you care. You'll get some in insider info. And when you call the PR office, Oh, hey, it's uh, Bob from ReviewGames.com. That's cool. I'll just put him right through. So typically, you'll start to get stuff that way. You get invited out. And occasionally, you'll get uh, invited to some industry-only events. Uh, for example, we at Tweet got invited to CES this year, um, free, uh, E for All, and uh, what else did we get invited to this year? important things is when you are contacting the companies like if you get the one product that you want to review from that's fine but just keep keep that contact open just keep on contacting them let them know what's going on even if it's just like someone say like hi how are you doing uh thanks like even would you say it says it's a safe thing to say like after you got your first thing to send a thank you note yeah absolutely that's one of the most important things i can do is when you start with if a company sends you something at first thank them like, uh, and I mean to the point where if you can get the company's mail address, send them, send them a card. Or depending on who it is, if it's, uh, I've sent um, flowers before, if I've been talking with the PR rep and say, hey, I saw Die Hard or something like that. Send them something kind of cute from that. Because it shows that you want to establish a personal relationship with them. That's not overstepping boundaries because you want to become friends with these people. And eventually, true friendships do form. Because these little things, just like sending a thank you note or an email or something, just let them know that you appreciate the time. These make a difference between being an amateur and being a professional and opening a professional like business relationship and communication with these uh, companies and clients. Because mm -hmm. when, when you take the time and effort just to say thank you and uh, approach it in a professional way, they will treat like professionals and you'll get all the benefits from that. Yeah. Now, it's like, like I was saying earlier, it's a little different when you're an independent blog or an independent podcast, but more companies are taking notice of this. One notable is uh, the BBPS.com. These guys run out of St. Catharines, not Niagara Falls area, and they're a gaming blog. I didn't know they were recognized by Microsoft and Sony until this year. So it does prove that people within our community can get involved. There's also, a company, or there's also websites like uh, Destructoid, uh, Game Trailer, ScrewAttack.com, and all that stuff. So it's not impossible to get in with all uh, larger companies. Now, computer companies can be a little bit tricky. Um, for example, Apple, I haven't had much luck contacting them and getting involved with something. Now that's just because their Canadian PR is a little bit difficult to do. Now I'm not slamming them, we just may not be big enough to be on their, on their particular radar. And we have our first speaker. Bye. <laughs> they say the long two feet, I'm going to mock everyone that leaves, just so we <laughs> It's what I do, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, so any questions from the audience here? Like, I want to help you guys do this. Like, what companies do you guys want to contact? What type of uh, viewer or download or subscriber do you think you need until these companies will start saying that your numbers are enough for them worth their time to 
Uh, do you want to answer that? Or? Um, Actually, if you want to be a part of the presentation, by all means. Of course. I'm right. for Fox Smartphone on Office PC 98, and a couple of the techniques that I did before I went with who I was was um, I made a list of who I wanted to get stuff from, and um, I wrote to them before I wanted anything. I said, hi, you know, my name is Kari, and this is what I do, blah, blah, blah. And then I would update them every couple of months, and then I would hit them up with something, and I have got almost every single thing that I want up to stuff that costs a thousand bucks. And even Microsoft sent me a pocket PC and I never had to return it. Um, so that's one thing, hit them up first. Um, when I'm reading blogs and magazines and newspapers and stuff like that, um, I have a site called uh, Banner Report. It has 15,000 banner ads on it for no good reason other than the fact that I felt like doing it. So uh, I was reading the New York Times who writes about online advertising. So what I do is I look and see, when they mention the name of someone that's in an ad agency, or someone who works for something related to advertising. I just write their name down. And then when I was promoting my site, um, and I got free stuff for that too, is I already knew who the people were. Um, so you can see what your competitors are doing, see who they're contacting, see who they're interviewing, make a note of that, and then contact these people before you want anything. And then the other thing that's really helpful is um, it's not who you know, but it's who they know. For example, I know someone whose mother has a post fax machine number. Now I have no hope in hell about getting it, but the point is I know someone who has this information. So the people that you know, who they know, then you get this brief introduction. And I, that's how I got stuff from uh, Toshiba and um, a few other places too. So basically make friends with people who are more important than you <laughs> or who have better contacts or whatever, and then get them to help you get stuff or to make the introduction. And then you can ask for stuff. And a lot of times, uh, you're going to get it. Like, uh, this laptop here is my backup laptop. And um, it was my original laptop. It cost a lot of money because it's a gaming laptop. And I don't have that much money, so I really went out, went to town. And it broke. And I had already spent an extra $400 to get a no questions asked return. And they asked a lot of questions, and they just made my life living hell and waited to return it. They were total, excuse me, assholes. So I went to another conference and I met a guy there who was speaking and he was the community manager for Dell. And so I went up to him and I said, you know, uh, nice speech, really enjoyed it. I have a question. And that guy put me in touch with, there's someone at Dell, their entire job is to um, deal with people who walk up to executives and conferences and say shit to them. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I now have a new laptop. Um, when I first ordered this one, it came with the wrong stuff and they persuaded me to keep it, and they gave me a bunch of free stuff. And then it broke, so it didn't matter anyway. So I have, now have a second laptop that has a built-in webcam, um, it's got a bigger hard drive, it's got double the RAM, etc., etc. But what, my point is this, you have to meet people, uh, walk up to them, uh, write to them, start making your contacts, and then when you need stuff, they already know who you are and you know, or else, so there's that part. And the other part is um, meet people and then get them to introduce you to other people. And then you get stuff. Okay, so my question is how many people do you need on your <laughs> Sometimes site? Sometimes it doesn't matter. Okay, so well, you think it's just the PR connection? Absolutely. Yeah, basically, um, if you start from nothing, you can even, like, like she said, if you establish them before your show starts, if you don't have any listenership or downloads, whatever, just tell them who you are, make contact with them, most importantly, give, give them a phone call. Let them know who you are, let them know that you're interested in what you, in what you want to do and what you can offer them. And typically they'll respond to you because they know who you are. I have one other point too. Um, the guy who is the editor of Wired.com recently published uh, a post online that was picked up by many blogs. And he said, this is a list of assholes who contact me improperly. And now they never contact me again because I have blacked the email list. They listed over 300 email addresses, and some of them are really well-known PR companies. And they wrote, you sure this? Yeah. yeah. Um, they wrote to him and said, uh, dear editor, dear sir, dear man, whatever. Never use his name or anything like that. And he, he didn't like the way they contacted them. And so he publicly humiliated them and he'll never speak to them again, which I found kind of obnoxious, but I also learned the last from it. And I actually ended up writing to him about 
about something else. But I knew that he had risk of his, his uh, position. And I also don't like it. Sometimes it's not just polite. Some people don't like their surrogate matter. Um, and they don't like generic stuff. Sometimes they want it done properly. And I think that's really important, too. Yeah, basically, make sure you use their name. Do your homework. Obviously, you know, you're going to contact. If you can, let's say you want to contact Microsoft. Find out who their PR company is. In this case, here in Toronto, it's uh, High Road Communications. And those guys are awesome. I've never had a problem with them. But uh, like she said, just make sure you know what you're doing. Be polite about it. Like proper proper uh, business format does help. But yeah, try and avoid dear sir, madam, whatever. What's the name of your company? High Road Communications. Depending on what, like, I, for example, what would you want to get from from them? Just out of curiosity, like you're looking for video games or movies. Probably more tech on it. You know, there's look something for like three sixty. say hi my name is so and so and you say I'd like to get involved with the Microsoft tech division I understand you're the PR company they'll put you in touch with whoever you need to as long as you're polite be detailed in in, in uh, what you want because these people have a million emails a day so make sure that your subject line in your email will capture attention not just hi hello you want to including if, if, if someone is giving you someone's name told you to write mention a name you can put it in the subject line blah 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 and then in brackets by you know Tom Jones. So that way it's some um, or whatever. That way they know it's something that they can look at because they'll skip a lot of stuff. Um, and the other thing I was gonna say too is um, even if you have your own podcast or your own blog or whatever, um, you can occasionally do a guest post on somewhere else that's bigger than you. So that way you can say I'm also a guest blogger or a guest writer at Google uh, and gadget or whatever. That way, whether or not you're going to use it for your other thing, um, they, if you have a small audience personally, you can sort of intimate that you have a wider audience. And that's just not um, limited to that stuff, too. You can approach your uh, local newspapers with this, approach local radio, because local radio is hurting for financing. Where are most people from? Are you from the, from the uh, GTA or whatever? You could approach 680 News, you could approach and 640, don't be afraid to contact local radio and say, hey, I'm interested in doing a piece on, say, the iPhone or whatever. And they'll say, okay, cool. And then if you write something for them, you get a little bit of credibility. So you say, hey, I did a piece on this station. So when you're writing to these companies, they have been featured on 610 C CKTV and 640, it tends to help. And so that's, that's another part of my presentation, is getting involved in local media, getting noticed sort of thing. And like we said, make sure, like, write people you think are going to care. And just make sure you in, in, uh, introduce yourself properly. Um, and what else really to say? Oh, we have our second neighbor. I'll be back. Promise? I swear. Bring cookies? I swear. I don't know, 
I basically had it go um, kind of both ways. I find better the emails first, because this way they see that you're interested, and then if you follow up to them, it's like it's, it shows more that you're willing to continue for the conversation. But then again, sometimes calling first, going through the chain of command, also right. Depending on depending on which company you're dealing with, and if if you like do your homework and read around, say find out what people's experiences are. We'll say I don't know, you Universal Pictures or Warner Brothers. You typically find out how the chain of command goes because yeah. people blog about this all the time, and that can give you a bit of an edge in where you want to go with it. Small industry, so everybody knows everybody. 
So the more like the better brand reputation you have in the company, the more likely your name's going to get recognized later on. And if you're known as honest, then they're going to respect you for that. Cheers. Yeah, like in our experience, uh, the uh, the VR people that we dealt with, we'll, we'll find someone we'll work with them, and uh, we'll we'll be trying to uh, like find some other product with you, and they'll know the people from a different company because the the network is just so small in the community. Just pretty much in the business, almost everyone knows everyone, so it's very easy once you establish contact and maintain a friendship with someone in the media that you'll you will open up doorways to other parts of the media, just like. Back to the view, it's, it's always best to just be 100% honest with the view. It's, it's very tempting to like sort of try to kiss their ass because, okay, this is stuff, let's, let's return the, the favor and like not be 100% honest. But the best thing to do is be honest because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for the voice of just like the common person. That's the whole reason why they're seeing you this stuff so they can find out and get that sort of uh, feedback. Yeah, because basically, if you give them a negative review, for example, it'll help them develop something better later on. And they're going to look at the community and they'll see who said this was good, who said this was bad. And they'll look at the person that's been the most honest. And they're going to respect you for that. Any other questions? I am. Um, I'm also accepting questions over Twitter at uh, Birdman Dodd as well. So I've got my cell phone if anything comes out. But uh, yeah, I guess more or less the point of my presentation is when you contact companies, be honest, be yourself be respectful, and in return, the companies will be the exact same back to you. Don't expect results right away, but it could happen. Some big companies will land in your lap, because they don't expect a lot of the blogging community and the podcast community to get involved. Like, it's always big radio stations, or it's magazines, or it's television. It's the grassroots people like us that I think have a bigger voice than, say, ABC News or something like that. Pierce? Yeah, especially this one, even I would say in just the past two years, media Sites and sources to get their news, to gain their knowledge, to find their views, and stuff like that. So now is the perfect time to sort of make your way into the media and contact these companies if you're a mini blogger or a podcaster or established one. Now is the best time for this media. And because podcasting is so easy, you know, and like because of podcasting, I, I for myself found a job in traditional media because of this. And now they see that they can get podcasters uh, basically started. So a lot of companies are also willing to help people launch their careers, so to speak, by re reviewing product or going to concerts or trade shows and whatnot. And it's not impossible to get invited. In fact, um, another thing, I, one thing we did last night, for example, we went to Evil Dead the Musical, and we, which was quite cool, I recommend it. Um, but if you call the Playhouse company, for example, say you want to go to a concert, if you're a music-based show, say, hi, I'm a new emerging show, I'd like to speak with, say, I don't know, somebody pick a band, <laughs> uh, I don't know, say, Bill Scarlet or something like that. You would call, you would email the concert promoter, explain who you are, and because a lot of bands are really approachable, they will talk to you. And then you start getting your reputation in that industry. Now, that's not necessarily stuff, but that's an experience. And a lot of companies just want the exposure for that because PR is PR, depending on whether it's a blog or a podcast. And then, obviously, if you advertise that, they'll see that you care to let people know about what you think. And it just kind of spirals from there. Because so I find reviewing stuff and receiving product is the doorway to bigger and better things. It's not just getting a free DVD. It's an experience which can be a real big career stat. So, any other questions? Or I can more or less wrap this up. It's kind of a short presentation. Like I said, basically, it, it all boils down to professionalism in contact. And then, obviously, if you guys have any other questions that I can answer a little bit more in depth, I'm available at MikeJDodd at gmail.com. That's M I K E J D O D D at gmail.com. Or if you want to talk to me, I'm definitely open to phone calls. That's uh, 289. 228-1406. And literally, I'm available 24-7. If you've got a problem, I will help you. Because that's sort of my reputation in the industry. I, I really want to help. Because the podcasting community has given so much to me, I want to give back to it. So, uh, I guess that's pretty much about it. Thanks for coming out, and uh, yeah. By the way, I'm also offering a special prize to a random Twitter person. So, bird hand up. Yes, I'm a cell agent.